dive into this. I definitely remember that. That's crazy. I remember seeing him post clips too. This guy's crazy. Yeah, this he's, guy, he's actually nice like Sora's, that. Sora's, Sora's kind of cracked. Yeah. Sora's kind of cracked. I don't doubt it at all. I mean, it takes a lot to go pro in a game like that. And in a game like Smash Brothers, which he was really good at first. So let's see. Mm -hmm. It's going to be Steve versus Palutena. Oh, <laughs> Pot Fragger. That's so funny as the tag. <laughs> well, uh, Sora definitely understands what that means. Yeah. He's let's been hope there. It's not true. Probably more used to calling his teammates bots than, you know. I'm, right. Not that I can speak to that. You know, I just, you know, may have, may have held him down a little bit. I don't know. But either way, Sor with the Steve has been so unstoppable this weekend. It's unbelievable. And good as a, good of a run that Lop has had. This is a really tough matchup for Kelly. I mean, you're looking at a character that can box with the best of them, anti-air with the best of them, and Palu really loves to approach from the air and also stop you from getting grabs. And that's what Palu likes to open you up on the ground, too. It's tough. Yeah, by the same token, I feel like Paulo's got some good tools against Steve. You got Explosive Flame just disregarding the walls, right? It just spawns where it's going to spawn. You've got great normals. Steve, not the best out of shield game, far from the worst. Of course, if you land in footstool down air range, oh my god. The problem is that it doesn't matter how bad your out of shield game is on, against Palu, unless she can safely back air your shield. And there are not many characters she can do that to, but... Steve is not one of them. She cannot safely back air his shield, especially on parry. And Soar already showing that off. Two quick ones. <laughs> you already know he's getting there on the perfect line. <laughs> I mean, honestly, this could be a three stock to open this up. Hasn't even made use of the diamonds yet. And this early damage, he has not missed these combos at all. And we're just watching Pacha, who I'm assuming reps Montreal due to the crowd that was behind him, mm -hmm. right? And... If that's any indication of people that Soar plays with regularly, Palutena is certainly on the menu. I feel like it, this far into Ultimate, if you don't know this matchup, you're probably just not a good player. Like, well, you you know, can't make it that far in bracket without fighting one. Or, or you live in my region where there are no Palus, True. miraculously, somehow, and I don't know how that happens. You do have like 12 Robs, though. Yeah, no, all of our PR is accountants. It's Robs and Steves and Royce. <laughs> I don't know how it happens. That's but regular guy names. It's just regular, just people. Just people yeah. on our PR. Right? Robert, Roy, and Steven. Robert, Roy. I literally, my, my mom dated an accountant named Robert. <laughs> that it's, it could not be more on point. And Soar could not be more on point either. That game, he started it off with the momentum, and he never let go of it. Got the early kills, got the early damage, and really did not take much more than glancing blows. No, that was over uncomfortably fast right there. Soar, I'm sure he's feeling pretty comfortable, though. Lop, that nervous look on his face, kicking things off and continuing in between games here. Now you see why. You can you can see behind the mask even. He's thinking, boy, I am really playing against a good Steve, huh? Man, it, like he, it's almost like he's looking directly at the Twitch chat and saying, please, some words of encouragement. Right, feel my pain, guys. A little <laughs> empathy goes a long way. He's looking at the camera like, I know you're behind me. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> he'll go back to the chat and he'll be like, I can still feel good about myself. But you got to feel good about yourself after the game. That is what's important. And Lop is going to take a minute to think about what do you need to change up against the Steve, right? And to an extent, sometimes you get the sense that you need to play that player versus player game a little bit better. Sometimes it does come down to learning the matchup as you go along, especially if you're not experienced in it. And again, you're riding a very fine line in Palu Steve. Yeah, I feel like Paul is one of those characters that's really good and really popular, but she just is intuitive. She makes sense to play. Steve is one of those characters that's really good and not so popular. You really only see these character specialist types before, I'd say, the last couple months when Steve has really risen to prominence. Yeah. They're the only ones playing him. Uh, so it's harder to come by experience in this matchup than the Palu matchup. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. But the, the pocket Palu was a thing for a long time. Right. Pocket Steve, a little bit less common. Um, that said, I think it's all going to change, right? What I said about Palu, like this far into Ultimate, if you don't know how to fight her, what are you doing? Same's going to be said about Steve very shortly. Yeah. And uh, game two going to Hollow Bastion, by the way. I. I, I hesitate to take Steve to, uh, Steve to a single platform stage in the first place because if he starts camping under there, it's very hard to stop him. But on Hollow Bastion especially, it's one of the unique stages where you actually have two types of materials where you can mine. That and Kalos are the only two legal stages where you can do that. And Lop right now is saying, I'm not going to give you the chance to mine. That is why Sora has been struggling so far. Hasn't gotten a lot of big resources, and that has come down to Lop being up in his face this entire time. Yeah, that's one of the edges that Palutena has in this matchup. She's very fast on the ground. She can rush Steve down if he's trying to mine, if he's trying to craft, you know, the things the, that the Steve things does. The things that he does, yeah. 
Those are, those are mainly the things that come to mind, weirdly, when I think about Minecraft seeds. Yeah, something just tells me that that's in his repertoire. <laughs> All right. Wow. Lop. Making this match a little lopsided. This is actually getting super out of hand. A far cry from what we saw in game one. I love that that works in so many ways. It is literally sided to lop. Yes. It is, it is lopsided in more ways than one, but at least a little bit more even as Sora gets that first stock and sets up a devilish set of stairs to stop Lot from getting in the way of that mining, but does get those stone tools up. Again, anything outside of the center of the stage is going to be stone for Steve, and then if it's on that stained glass sort of c construction in the center, that's all iron. So you get two different resources, sets of resources that you're mining from a Steve, and that means you have very interesting routes worth of resources that you can mine too. Yeah, like, do you want to focus on getting the most mine cards or maybe the best blocks? Like, mm -hmm. got to pick and choose. And That's the versatility is huge for Steve, right? Because normally if you go to an iron stage like Lilac, you don't get to set up the blocks to help you mine, right? You're all about just spamming your iron tools, but you get the best of both worlds here on Hall of Bastion. Regardless of that, Lop is not thrown off by it, still playing with the lead and getting things started, but the, the crafting table actually getting in the way of those near combos. Very unfortunate. All right. Lop, you had such a big lead, but Sora started to chisel away at it. Wow, chiseling away at that minecart, stopping it in its tracks. Oh! The beauty of a multi-hit aerial. Man, Lop really going for some crazy stuff to end this game. Tetromino not going to find anything as that back air, the invincibility, helping Lop just challenge this Alex and Man, the damage has been incredible from Lop in this game. What really, a catch really nice. right there. The horizontal hitbox on up air so wide. Great tool against Anvil. You don't have to directly challenge it from underneath. That allows Politana to actually go for some nice chases on Steve. Oh, so negative on block. No pun intended. That up smash. Very <laughs> laggy. If you don't get scooped. One. Yeah, right? <laughs> hey, you might get more than one. Give yourself some more credit. That's a pretty dominant game. It was. Yeah. Very strong. Like you said, kind of came down to the fact that the, uh, the out of shield options from Steve, right? You mentioned it earlier. Not always the best, right? Up tilt that shield isn't bad, but when you go for a big punish like that up smash, Palu can get away with things like that backer. Yeah, you gotta spend 11 frames dropping your shield to have access to up tilt, right? So, I don't know. Palutena, she's got some great aerials for spacing you horizontally, namely fair and bear, right? Uh, Steve can nair out of shield and he can footstool out of shield. Shield grab's kind of ass. Mm -hmm. So if those two are off the table, as in you spaced far enough away from them, it can be very difficult to respond to pressure. I was going to bring it up that Sora's got some options here. Steve, not even actually his main character. I think it's currently Sephiroth, but he has the Steve, and PT was his old name. So I, I feel the logic behind this coming out. Squirtle's small and annoying. You finish the job with Ivysaur, Charizard in a pinch. But I actually feel like Steve is probably better into Politana on paper. I do too. I, I also I also think it's so strange that there are so many PT Steve names specifically. Yeah, DD, Soar. DD and Soar. I hear that Onan has a Pokemon trainer. Quid plays both of them as well. Right. So uh, there are so many people that it just it works for them, right? And Right now, Sora getting a pretty nice start with this Squirtle and feeling much more free to get up in Lop's face, for sure. Yeah, I think it's probably just that most of these players, most of the Steve players, had a main beforehand, right? So, I suppose they, they had weren't... Had to play somebody. Yeah, they weren't just waiting for him to come out to pick up the game. Didi, maybe, right? You know, he's yeah. like five. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know Didi was actually nasty with PT and Pac-Man before. I, I certainly knew of him. Big shout out to Didi. Either and, way. And some of them played Luigi. Right, yeah, Cola. Yeah. Akola yeah. and Yanni both. And Yanni, yeah. yeah. Crazy, man. There's definitely patterns and archetypes with these oh. characters. Wow. Just barely making it there in time. Getting it's pushed away in withdraw. One of the interesting things about that withdraw, too, is that if you get hit by a projectile while you're inside of it, you get stuck in lag for a long time. Like, if a wolf lasers you, he has enough time to run up and grab you afterwards at most ranges. Yeah, that's pretty insane. It's the price of invincibility, right? Yeah. It's got to have some drawbacks. Imagine uh, getting footstooled out of that. Ugh. Whoa. Yeah. Either way, looks like Lop is really starting to push things into his favor. He's looked great in the last two games after an extremely rough start. Seems like he's playing much more free, too, right? He looked like he was just really uncomfortable, really pressured playing against the Steve. 
Gets the PT a little bit nicer, but getting baited by that neutral B, most people's instinct is to jump over that flamethrower. And then that forward air is such a crazy kill move. Yeah, Soar thinking to step ahead for sure. You got to get out of the corner somehow. For sure. <laughs> a Pokemon trainer, though, still looking nice. The Squirtle especially has been I mean, just kind of a neutral monster. It feels like Lop hasn't been able to keep it out and Soar's had great control of the pace of the game. The matter has just been damage output, which has just kind of been one glancing blow here and there. Right, stray hits. Oh. Second stock looking a lot better. Ooh, love that. Skipping the ledge with the up B. A lot of people are just looking at two frame because Politanic doesn't have a hitbox as she's returning, or really at all on that move. And you get an audio cue, too. Like, yeah. everything is there, the whole recipe to It's like hit me. No. Yeah, <laughs> we're playing Rhythm Heaven, not Smash. Wow. Bum, 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 bum. I'm shocked that that down throw up didn't connect with Ivysaur. Soar now forced onto Zarf. Oh, forcing himself onto Squirtle to find this kill. I'm not sure if that's the play. I like that. Bob down the way again. up. I think that Soar is switching back to the Ivysaur because he believes that that is where he's going to most effectively get the stocks. I mean, it's in the name, right? The Ivysaur mm -hmm. has definitely been the most solid for him thus far. And you can see it right there. The juggle game has been immensely good. Soar swinging the momentum back into his favor on that second stock. It's looking a little bit rough for him. I mean, not even all that bad, right? It's just that Lop was getting the better at the early exchanges, but it's not how you start. It's how you finish. Let's see what Soar's able to do. Who's going to win the rubber game here, right? Mm -hmm. Push the things into their advantage and have counter pack control for the rest of the set. My god, a back air evens it right back up. Lop is not stopping. Lop has just had really, really nice timing. He's not trying to play to his own tempo. He's doing a really good job of shaping that around Sora's game plan and realizing this is where you feel comfortable playing, right? This is when you want to throw out your moves and you think that I'm not going to strike, but I'm sticking to you like glue. I'm like, a, I'm racing on the mountain pass and I'm right on your bumper. I'm not sure how much I'm feeling some of these switches. Squirtle might be the best answer at low percent, but also you just have to consider this character has no range. Yeah. Politan is a character who feeds on characters without range. Anybody who needs to commit to get up close against Palu, for sure. And again, right, playing around the timing, something that Lop has been doing a really good job around, just kind of in the zone with Soar's mindset and kind of playing as a, if I were Soar, what would I do? And then shaping around that. I love that like 10 seconds ago at this point, maybe 20. But to get out of the corner, Lop just jumped, landed on the platform, ran all the way across it, and landed on the other side. Didn't press a single button during it. Oh my god, but it's not going to matter. Clever as your corner escapes may be, Soar will find a way to close the door on it. Game three going his way. Man, you can see how excited Montreal is for Soar too. Like, feeling just empowered, right, by everybody behind him. And even in a game where it felt like Again, Lap was sort of playing around you. Sometimes that can be very uncomfortable. Said, all right, well, I mean, if I get to go at my tempo, then, I mean, all it really takes at that point is to make sure that my execution is clean and that I'm not giving you free openings. And especially with the Squirtle, you mentioned it, right? Halu loves playing against stubby characters, but if their spacing is good, then she's going to struggle a little bit, especially after that jab, after the grab got nerfed. Yeah, right? You no longer have a tether. You <laughs> come here. Well, either way, with the crowd behind Soar, he's starting to fly. And I feel like you just don't want to let your city down, you know? You want to keep those cheers going. You're going to play your heart out to do it. Lob was looking really good, though. I mean, game two went his way. Game three certainly could have. So will we see a fifth one? At this point, it wouldn't surprise me. Lop has definitely shown some good adaptations, especially when he gets a second game against the character, right? Seemed like he actually felt a little lost against the Steve. And then game two, looked like he'd been playing Steve for months. And so, you know, looking like he was having a little bit of a challenge against the Squirtle, against, you know, kind of the whole Pokemon Trainer deal in game three. Now he's gonna open up that space, get to play around those threat zones from Soar a lot more, not as claustrophobic as Smashville. Maybe now we do get to see that game five. Yeah, might have just needed another game against the PT to get in the swing of things. We were talking about how this is Smash and not Rhythm Heaven, right? Or yeah. how it was Rhythm Heaven and not Smash for a second. But if you think about it, fighting games are rhythm games. If you're able to make the opponent dance to your beat, well, guess what? You can throw all the curve balls. You can mix it up whenever you want. You're the DJ. They're, they're respecting your mix. Yeah. 
I mean, again, it just goes to show as long as you can make your opponent feel like they can't take the initiative, they're going to struggle a whole lot. And in that situation right there, Soar burning those resources to try to get away from the Paladin as quickly as possible. Lop taking a big early lead. Okay, a lot of work left to be done for both players. Still a lot of Smash to be played here in game four, but starting off very strong for Lop's Palazana. Oh, it makes a fatal mistake trying to whip punish Squirtle's down smash. No, oh, sir, no. you get to press that for free. You can, you can stop it trying to whip punish Squirtle's, and then I'm just like, yeah, no, right. I'm on board. That's a possible. There's <laughs> I no agree. way. Yeah. <laughs> but once you get that Ivy Soar out right now, you get to throw out those huge hitboxes. The Charizard for Soar as well. We haven't seen this put in a ton of work. There is one really good ledge trap. Aside from that, uh, I will what were eat you my saying? Words. I'll make you eat those words. Okay, 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 yeah, relax. All right, I'm Shadow the Hedgehog now. I'm the edgy guy. And you know what? It goes to show, right? If you can hold that in your back pocket, Lop again, being very comfortable when he gets a good look at your character, has seen a lot of the Squirtle, saw a lot of the Ivysaur, didn't get to fight against a lot of the Charizard, so that could actually be the ace up Sora's sleeve in this game four. Yeah, we're really seeing Lop thrive with familiarity, right? And the second there's a wrench in the plans, it goes really well for Sora. Maybe if this does go to game five, Sephiroth comes out. Yeah. And that could be a big problem for Palutena, who's not ready to play around that kind of threat zone. Only if you get the chance, though, because when an Ivy Sword gets you off stage, you are going to be in a bad situation. Yeah, I'm loving the adaptive play here from Lop. It's just a matter of if you can adapt quickly enough to keep up with your opponent's tricks. Oh my goodness, and Sora not letting up on that pressure, chasing way deep off the stage. And trying to wait for a commit, Lop doesn't give it to him, and instead takes oh. out his free initiative. And it's done! Death. My god, Lop just showing up big in all the even number games, right? We saw yeah. that from Tilde in the last set. I don't I know. Guess who won that set? Oh boy. Yeah, exactly. So, I don't know. Soar maybe will be just out of tricks to throw in the way of Lop next game. But let's just wait. Got a lot more Smash coming. He's actually just sitting in the back, like, using Hyper Potions on his Pokemon, just switching back and forth. That's super fun. <laughs> I would love to see that animation, right? On the platform with Pokemon Trainer just, like, healing from the balls. That would yeah. be kind of cute. Yeah, especially if this was, like, a tag fighter, right? And they were, like, healing up. Very cute Hey, stuff, you know what, yeah. Nintendo? I got some ideas. Hit me up. But anyways. Yeah, you thought it. this was the most polished fighting game you've ever seen? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I might I be love, asking too much. You already got 90 Pokemon characters. Tournament. It's a good game. My roommate's a top player. Anyways, 120%. Soar also sticking with the Squirtle at percentages where people figure, I would normally like to play Ivy or Charizard and just take this stock immediately, but instead feeling just so comfortable with the Squirtle, maybe making him pay for it, though. At 71%, Lop looking very comfy. Yeah, Squirtle can kind of weasel his way into Palutena's range. He's got great air drift, tiny hurtbox, all very useful in several matchups, but especially this one. Great switch right there to the IV, but now down through a back air on the Charizard. It can connect, getting to stick it out with the Cabbage Dog, though. And if he can take this one stock, it could be looking at a bad spot for the Goddess of Light. Razor Leaf going to go right through Explosive Flame, taking away everything I've ever known about Pokemon. <laughs> I thought this could critical. Oh! Not that time, though. You know that. You know your type matchups. Exactly. See, uh, clap it up, Twitch chat. I did <laughs> I did the thing. I'm a commentator talking about type matchups. Ooh, game five, though. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. How do we get here? It started off so dominant for Soar, and then Lop figured it out. And then we saw the same thing repeat itself in games three and four. But now, it's the end of the road. Soar, are you going to switch it up? Is your Sephiroth warmed up enough? Is it ready for this match when you're being pushed to your limit? Or are you going to stick to the characters you've already shown us? This is this is like the, the branching paths meme. You have on the right. on the bright side, you have your, your Steve and your Pokemon trainer, the characters that have already won a game. And on the right, the dark Sephiroth, the evil man who could come through potentially throw a wrench into Lop's plans, but also potentially, if that's not a character that's warmed up for you, you could suddenly be questioning yourself the entire day. What was the right decision? Exactly. That's the curse of being a multi-character main. And Soar knows that struggle probably better than anyone bringing three characters at a high level this weekend so far. I wouldn't mm -hmm. be shocked to see him bring out another one. But no, it's right back to Steve. See if it works out. 
Wop already showing some good knowledge, parrying that bear on the way down, or maybe it was back there. I'm not sure which way Steve is facing. It's kind of hard to tell. You know, he's a square. He's a rectangle. Sort of not the most visually clear animations, and honestly, the more that a Steve main can make use of that, the better, because that frame data varies quite a bit between the forward air and the back air. Yeah, you thought Snake was the only stealth-based character in Smash? <laughs> Think again. He's a sneaky man. Minecraft Snake right there. <laughs> All right, here it is. Great start for Sora so far, up 60%. Not quite a stock, but I feel like it's on the way. And to his credit, I will say Lop has played around Anvil extremely well throughout the set. Just not even getting directly underneath Steve, perfectly spacing it just to the left or right. Oh my god, wow. great timing there. Yeah, that uh, bottom hit of that up smash can two frame. It's a very, very dangerous move when you don't have a hitbox on your recovery and Palu doesn't really have to fear you. But got to fear Soar this whole game. Already done with the dirt too, so it's gonna become even harder and harder to stop the Steve from mining. And on Pokemon Stadium 2, oh. that's a tough thing to get around. Soar, great first stock. We were talking about players revealing tricks or keeping them in the bag until the very end. Soar actually did show us that on Hollow Bastion, I believe. He tried that and it didn't work. But this time, Mob's gonna fall for it. All right, throwing that up smash out again. It's active for something like 16 frames. Such a good move wow. to catch ledge grabs with. But that up air has really shown to be a thorn in Sora's side. It outranges Steve very well on a lot of key moves out of disadvantage. And again, dare and my part. I was about to say, it even does, like you mentioned earlier, around the anvil, which Lop has not been falling victim to. He hasn't been footstooled out of shield because his spacing has been so good and hasn't been able to hit on it on the way down. Because, I mean, Sora also has to respect the reflector. You mess that up, you're dead at like 30. Very true. That is like the one thing that really scares minecart spammers, right? Is potentially getting hit by a. Oh yourself. god, down in B. My or, worst uh, enemy. Spammers, sorry. Yeah. yeah. But right now, Soar, with the diamond tools in hand, only one stock away from stuffing the upset from Lop. And that damage continues to climb. Quebec, they want one more stock from their local hero. Honestly, I feel like that might be one of the off-stream setups. You I've know, been trying to figure it out this whole time. I think that there are two exciting sets. Yeah. I'm definitely <laughs> knowing that Montreal is behind their boy, though, and oh no, he was the set explode for Soar, getting that clutch with the diamond forward smash, and the moment that Lop lost control of that resource war, it was all over. Man. That was a great set, front to back. You could just see the adaptation, the counter adaptation, the counter picks. It was just overall great. Lot 567, a player whose name I did not know until today, really impressing me. And by the way, just to show you guys how cool this family is, as Sora was just on this stream winning, look, Supergirl Kells is fighting Riddles on the other stage. Oh, man. And I have a screen protector. Don't worry. It's not a 